on Food 101, we're going to be talking about how to pick the best produce. And there's nobody better to tell us about that than my friend Greg Corrigan of Rayleigh's, Vice President of Produce and Floral here. So how, first of all, tomatoes. How do you pick the best tomatoes? Well, tomatoes here, one of our best sellers is the tomato on the vine, as you're seeing right here. So they're grown actually indoors. Mm -hmm. So they're most of the time, all you got to look for is to make sure there's no blemishes, no cuts, no mm -hmm. scars. But generally, they're consistent, good tomatoes. Okay. Um, and one thing that's commonly misunderstood is, is people tend to put tomatoes in the refrigerator. Yeah, I do that. And that's we not don't, good. You don't want to do that. Oh. It actually, anything below 55 degrees causes them to break down, they get mealy, they actually lose their flavor. Oh. So you don't want to do that. And you want to keep them out on your counter. And you notice this, as it's growing, that the riper ones are towards the, the top where the plant grows. Right. So those are the two tomatoes you want to use first. Okay. So as you, you know, work through the week, then you'll, you'll pick those two top ones first and then let those three bottom ones continue to ripen oh, up at okay. the, on the counter at room temperature. So Greg, we have some more tomatoes over here. What should we be looking with these guys? Well, these are the hothouse beefsteak tomatoes. And what you want to look for is just, again, no cracking, no blemishing, okay. no you know wrinkling. Yeah. Tend to be wrinkling will, will tend to show some of the, the, the decay or aging of the tomato. Oh but yeah, and, and then even on the, the, the smaller tomatoes, these tend to be a little higher in sugar content. Uh -huh. So these also, you wanna make sure there's nothing breaking down, no mold in the pack, it should make the nice firm red skin to them. Yeah, these look great. I mean, what, so I would pick these then. This Definitely, is a good that's one. that's ready to go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to the melon area. What should we look for like in a good cantaloupe? What are well, we looking for? Well, cantaloupe, again, you, a lot of it's based on the, the skin. You don't wanna see any blistering or any okay. wrinkling. You wanna see a nice, consistent round firm flesh to it okay. um, nice and heavy dense piece of fruit okay um, as you notice in here I think you're gonna yeah but is this bad I mean actually, I look at that and go ooh. it's actually not actually all that is is from where it sat on the ground oh, okay. it di didn't color up just because it was not exposed to light in the field oh okay so it's still good so it's still good still good, good piece of fruit okay um, but again you want to make sure there's not any cracks or breaking down or right. rubbing of the skin, that, that'll be an indication that it's starting to break down and be on its prime. And it should smell like a melon. <laughs> you actually can. You can actually, once these get a little bit, if they're not too cold, they're right. a little bit room temperature, you uh -huh. can actually smell some of the cantaloupe fragrance that gives off. So, so if you get a, a nice thing. strong fragrance, a nice strong cantaloupe fragrance, okay. that's going to be a good cantaloupe. Okay, that's good. Now what about the honeydew? What are we looking for? I noticed a difference in honeydew. color You here. can kind of see a little bit of difference in, in ripeness. These mm -hmm. aren't quite as ripe as the deeper, darker one. You'll see this deeper yellowing. You'll actually get a tackiness to the feel to it. Oh. Where these will be a little bit smoother, as they start to ripen and get a deeper color, you'll just get that tackiness to it. Oh, okay. It'll be a little more sticky, and those are the ones you want to go for. Now, this one, I always have trouble picking the best corn. What, what should I be looking for on this one? Well, you just want to find one that's got nice green coloring to it, where the silks aren't real moldy or beaten up. Okay. Um, ideally, you want to just rip that thing open, though, and check, make that. sure make sure you got full maturity all the way through to the corn, okay. that it's not immature and underdeveloped. Um, but, but corn, one thing about corn is once it's harvested, it instantly is turning from sugar to starch. Oh. So you want to get it in the fridge right away at home. Oh, you don't okay. want to store corn too long at home. You want to eat it right away. Because what happens? It'll before. definitely get starchy. Okay. And we don't we want, want starchy that. corn. Now, what's with the silk? What is that? Tell me about you know, that here, a little here's, bit. Here's a little trivia A fun for fact. Fun fact. Fun I love fact fun that, facts. That, did you know for every single one of those kernels, mm -hmm. there's a silk associated to it. So really? that's what those are from when the pollination occurs. Every single one of those kernels has a silk tied to it. Have you counted? Do you know for sure? Not in all of our spare time. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my personal favorite, strawberries. I love strawberries, but how do I pick a good basket of strawberries? Well, you definitely want to look for one that doesn't have any mold. You want to always turn them over. Look okay, good. I do around, that. That's you good. You know, shake them around a little bit. Make sure you don't see any that are getting fuzzy, because sometimes that happens. You'll get one strawberry that's bad. Again, you know, it'll kind of infest the whole package. But you want them nice, shiny, firm, no mold. Good, good. One thing that a lot of people will do is take these home and wash them up right away. But hmm. really, if you're not going to use them that very first day, you want to put them in the refrigerator just like this in the container and then take them out and wash them as you need them. Oh, really? Because that water, that moisture can tend to cause a little bit of mold to start growing That's on not them. Good. So you definitely don't want that. So wash them as you need them. So how long would you store these in the fridge, would you say? You know, some people will stretch it three, four, five, six days, but you definitely but don't want to stretch it beyond six or seven days. Too much longer than that, yeah, right? Yeah, that's going to push the limits of it. Okay, good, good, good. And when in doubt, 
If you have any questions, ask your local produce manager. The man, produce right? manager that's on, on duty, they're the experts in the in the field. They know what's going on. They know what's coming in local and good right then and there. Good. Always want to ask them what's going on. Good. You guys know. Okay. Thanks.